Hi, I'm Jordan from Kentner Creative. In this video, we're gonna show you how to connect the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone to the Mackie ProFX 10V3 audio mixing console. This is a very popular setup for video streamers and those who do a lot of video conferencing. This mixer offers a ton of inputs and outputs and flexibility and onboard processing. And this microphone is a very high value condenser microphone that sounds great, especially for the budget that it comes in on. A lot of people, this is their first or second setup just due to the price point and due to the quality of everything involved. And we're gonna show you how to set it all up how to plug it in, maybe you just bought the setup, or maybe you're looking to buy the setup and you just wanna know what's involved and how it sounds. So we're gonna cover all that in this video. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna use the USB output on this mixer. We're gonna connect it to our laptop, it's already connected, and then we're gonna record it on the laptop just to make sure that you can hear everything that comes out of this microphone when we connect it. Now before we connect this microphone to this audio mixer, let's take a look at the audio mixer first. Make sure that the mixer is completely zeroed out so we're all talking about the same thing if you have this set up at home and you're working along with me. So before we do anything, we want to make sure that the phantom power is turned off, all the white knobs are down, all these switches for the high Z and low cut and all that are all in the up position, they're not pressed down. We want the compressor turned down, we want the EQ flat on this mixer to make flat EQ, they should all be pointed up in the 12 o'clock position. The effects send, we're not working with that today in this video at all, so we can turn all that down just to keep it very simple. And the pan should be straight up in the 12 o'clock position. We want all the channels muted, and we want all the level knobs down. Now for me, I always leave this level knob for the main master level up in the 12 o'clock position where it says zero, which stands for unity or zero. It says U, sorry, for, it stands for unity or zero. Uh, we're not gonna use the main outs. You can use it for your setup. I don't know how you, you're integrating it, but for me, I prefer to use the USB to connect to the computer. This main level here, does not have any impact at all on the USB output. This only affects the XLR and quarter inch outputs up in the top corner of this mixer. The only thing that affects this USB output is the gain and the level, and we're gonna show you how to set that up now. Now before we connect this microphone, to the audio mixer as well. We wanna make sure that you have this microphone oriented correctly. There is a front and a back to this microphone. If you're looking at this microphone, you wanna read Audio-Technica. On the back of this microphone, it does say back, and this is a side address microphone, which means that you speak into the side of the microphone. You don't go like this, like uh, some other microphones, which would be a top address uh, microphone. This is a side address microphone. So you wanna be looking at uh, where it says Audio-Technica and speaking right into the side of the microphone. If you're not doing that, it will just sound bad and muffled like the microphone's not pointing at you because it's not pointing at you. So don't blame the mixer if this sounds uh, muddy. The first thing to check is to make sure that this microphone is pointed straight at your mouth. Next, let's use this XLR cable to connect this microphone to the mixer. Connect it to the bottom of the microphone and into channel one on the Mackie Pro FX 10V3. Next, we're gonna unmute the channel. We wanna press down this two phones button here that will activate the meter for us. And we want 48 volts of phantom power turned on. This is a condenser microphone and that means that we need phantom power to activate the capsule or the diaphragm of this microphone. It will not do any type of processing for you without this 48 volts of phantom power. You will not hear it, it will not work. Uh, so please turn that on. Next, we're gonna bring up the gain here. As I speak into the microphone, I'm gonna go over a couple tips for this gain. So in order for this to work, uh, by pressing this to phones button, we're able to preview it. Um, it's the same as turning this up to Unity and then you'd see it on the main mix mixer there. Uh, I'm gonna turn this down for now as we talk about gain. So if you're live streaming, you wanna get this as close to zero as possible 
without going over. If you're doing a live event using the XLR outputs and the quarter inch outputs up here, you can go over zero without peaking. The analog side of things has a bit more grace than the digital side, but when you're using the USB output on this mixer, if you go over zero, you will clip, there will be distortion, and there will be audio degradation. So you never want to go over zero. That being said, if you're video streaming or video conferencing, you're working in a live environment, you will often get complaints from those who are listening to you that you're not loud enough if you're not close to zero. So for that reason, you'd wanna cheat this gain up as high as possible to get this as close to zero as possible. If you're recording, if you're doing a podcast and you have the opportunity to edit your track after the fact, it's best practice to keep this meter somewhere between minus 18, minus 12. Give yourself a ton of headroom because in those environments and in any environment really, there's a high likelihood that somebody's gonna be really dynamic, they're gonna get excited, and you wanna have that headroom to make sure that you never go over zero. So. For this video, we're just gonna set it to minus 10. We're gonna pretend we're halfway through, um, live, halfway between live streaming and recording, just for the sake of showing you something down the middle. But if you're recording, you want something closer to minus 18. If you're live streaming, you want something closer to zero. Just keep that in mind. Now, another tool that we have here, I'm just gonna turn the gain down a little bit more. We're gonna turn this uh, level knob up to zero or unity. So now you can hear this Audio Technica AT2020. You're not hearing the lav mic anymore. You're hearing the actual microphone coming through the mixer. Now, another tool that we have to help us keep this meter in check is the compressor. What the compressor does on this Mackie Pro FX 10V3, it doesn't add any gain whatsoever. It has a fixed compression ratio of one to six, which means that as you turn this up, you're lowering the threshold. What that means is when you speak, the volume of the mic, as it exceeds the threshold, everything above that level gets compressed at a ratio of one to six. So it's quite abrupt. It will very much help you limit things. So if you increase this compressor, here on the uh, compressor knob, you're lowering the threshold and you're essentially putting in a ceiling of where you want this microphone to be. So anything that goes above it, it'll just hammer at six to one and compress it for you. So that's a really good way. If you're live streaming, you can cheat the gain up and then just compress the heck out of it. And that will help you stay uh, under zero so you won't get peaking. That's something that I would do if I was live streaming. But that being said, if you over compress, it can sound pretty chunky and digital. Um, it de definitely has a very distinct sound to it. Uh, so I wouldn't do it too much, but I would say 50% is fine. Some people go up to two thirds. Um, I really wouldn't push it more than that. To my taste, I like having it somewhere around a third to a half on the compressor. Now, as we talk about EQ, uh, let's talk about this low cut. For me, I like putting a low cut on anything that has a vocal on it. So I'm gonna press that down. On this mixer, what this does is this basically rolls off slowly everything under 100 hertz and that really just takes the mud out. It, 100 hertz and below doesn't add anything to the vocal, but if you're using this microphone with this console, there's a very good chance that you have other inputs, like you're live streaming and you have game sound or something, and game sound often has a lot of bass. So let's just get the bass out of the vocal and reserve that for the game sound. It just helps to clean up your mix quite a bit. Now let's talk about EQ. Again, if you're streaming with this microphone, by increasing the highs, you're going to hear it get nice and crispy up top. That might help some vocals, and depending on your tone, it might not help you. Uh, then there's this 2.5 kilohertz in the mid. What this does is it'll help you with your uh, vocal presence. This can be helpful if you're trying to make your vocal stand out among a whole bunch of game sound. That can really help. So what I would do we already did the 100 hertz roll off, but I would probably end up with like just a slight mid boost, and maybe a little bit of a low cut that'll help you stand out amongst the game noise that you're streaming with if you're using this for streaming. If you're podcasting, I would keep this thing uh, ruler flat uh, with the low cut. You can low cut or not, that's really up to you. So you might need to experiment with that. But for me, for podcasting, I like to keep things flat and just hear the full uh, tone of the presenter. The effects send, like we said, we're not using that in this video. 
uh, pan, I would leave dead center. It's unmuted, and the level, I would always leave at zero or unity. Uh, you're going to get the best, uh, most consistent meters that way. Um, so that's what I would do. Now, I do want to talk about as well another tip is if you're speaking directly into the microphone, if you're staying close to your microphone, uh, you'll hear what are called plosives. That's when you make P, B, or C sounds, uh, those hard sounds that release a lot of air from your mouth. It, if you say something like Pink Panther right into the microphone, you'll hear it kind of like blow out the capsule of the microphone. You're literally shaking the capsule with the amount of air coming out of your mouth. So one way to prevent that is to screen it and you can screen that air with something like a foam filter. So I'm gonna put this on now just so you can hear how this sounds. So here we have this optional foam filter on the microphone. I think that this helps. I would recommend this to anybody with this setup. They're only like 10 or 12 bucks or something like that. This one's made by a third party manufacturer on Amazon. Uh, for the money, I think it's worth it. I think the microphone looks just as good with it on and I do think it'll help you with that plosive protection. I do think it also helps to reduce some of the uh, more irritable things like a little bit of mouth noise or something like that. It kind of rounds those frequencies out a little bit. Uh, so I think you're going to be more successful with a foam filter. If you have any questions about what's in this video, or if you're looking for like links or specs or pricing, we do have all kinds of links in the description of this video. So just check out that description section. We have a ton of links there for you to check out. If you have any questions about this setup, if there's anything that I missed, please leave a comment in the comment section below. We do read every comment. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, either on this mixer or on this microphone, we have a ton of videos on both of them. So please check out, we have some links in the description below uh, to the playlist for this uh, Mackie Pro FX 10 V3 audio mixing console. And we have a playlist for the Audio Technica AT2020 microphone. So if you're looking for tips on either one of them, please check those out. And if you want to see more videos in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.